everybody. Welcome to Unmasked. My name is Kara Snyder, and we are so excited to have you here. On this show, we talk about real hurts and real struggles, but how you also have real hope in the midst of those struggles. You are not alone in what you are going through, and so many of us are battling the same thing. And what we want to do is offer you a safe place where you can know, okay, they understand what I'm going through, but they're going to help me to work through that. So we're excited to have you here. Very quickly, just a reminder that we are on Spectrum 180. You can find us on the Roku. And uh, we also have our podcast. So make sure that you are pulling up all of those My Coleman TV shows there. There's some great episodes you can find. And we are also live on Facebook if you're catching us there as well. So today, we're going to be talking about a subject that many of you, when you have seen me out and about, you ask me about this specifically. I've had students, I've had kids, adults, people of all ages ask me about one specific anxiety, and that is test anxiety. Adults, do you guys remember being in high school, being in college, and feeling that anxiety that you had when you had a test? I'm going to let you all in on a little bit of my life that not many people know, so if you are watching this show, you're going to get to be in on a little secret, Um, but again, I was the master of the mask. Even in high school, even in college, I was terrified to let people in on my struggles because I didn't realize that I was not the only one going through those things. But in high school, when it was that time to take that test for my license, y'all know that is a huge deal. You look forward to it. You are fired up. You're excited about it. And then it came the day to take that test. And I had practiced. I practiced with my parents. I had it down pat. I mean, perfect. And I was ready to go. And I remember getting in that car with my instructor and she had that clipboard in front of her and she was very serious and she was already checking and marking things off and that adrenaline was flowing and I completely blanked out. And instead of turning left, as she told me, and I heard her say, turn left to go to the course, I turned right onto the busy highway and she is freaking out. I am freaking out. We're just going crazy. She gets me off the highway. We do the test and then we park. And then she tells me the words that I dreaded to hear. You have failed. You have failed. So I had a complete Southern come apart, guys. I just completely fell apart. The poor lady, she had mercy on me and she said, listen, you can take it again and you can have a different instructor. And I did and luckily I passed, but it was so funny because the next day when my friends asked me, how'd you do on your test? I didn't tell them that I failed. Like I'm telling you guys, I'm letting you in on a secret. I told them I passed because I was scared to let them in on the fact that I felt anxious and I felt nervous when they actually felt the same way. And then when I was a senior in high school, I was a tutor for math, for calculus, and I had tutored several of my friends, several on the basketball team for a major test that was gonna be a huge part of our grade. And they all made hundreds, they rocked at it, they did a great job, and I got my grade back and I blanked on it and I made a C. But all of those kids that I had tutored, they all got hundreds. So what was happening? What is this test anxiety? Even in real estate, I was looking this up and I don't know what the exact statistic is, but it takes people at least two to three times to take that real estate test to get their license because there's so much information and you're sitting there and it's time to perform and that adrenaline shoots and what your brain is wanting you to do, it's wanting you to to flight. You know, you have that fight or flight response. Well, you can't fly, you can't run away from that test. And so when that adrenaline, when that anxiety is rushing through, what's happening is your IQ points are actually dropping 13 to 20 points. So this is why you're blanking out. Test anxiety is a psychological condition in which people experience extreme distress or fear and major anxiety. So you are ready, you're ready to perform on those exams, you're ready to work hard, and then you have that anxious moment hit, that fear or that dread hit, and it is impairing your performance. Now this will vary in different degrees and different levels for people. Some have it in a mild form, some have it in a very extreme and very um, excessive amount. And you feel like you have all this information, you've reviewed, you've stayed up late, and you know all the answers, but you blank out. You blank out and you wonder, 
How can I not remember this? Even on things like, it could be simple math, two plus two or eight times eight, and you just blank out because all of this super fuel is raging and it's running through your body and it, your body doesn't know how to respond, so it just blanks. It just goes away and your attention on that test goes away and it takes away your ability to concentrate. So what are some symptoms of test anxiety? So parents, you may be watching this today and you may have heard your kids or your college students talk about this and wonder, how can I help them? Because maybe that's not something that, that you've experienced um, and you want to help them, but you don't really know what those symptoms are, how to recognize it. And if you are a student um, of any age watching this today, I want to encourage you this week and next week to, to watch and to really listen because when you can know the symptoms and you can know the causes and how to overcome, as we'll talk about next week, that is gonna help you to be prepared so when that anxiety comes, you're gonna know what it is and you're gonna know how to respond. You're gonna know how to, to look at it and say, I know what to do from here. But here are some symptoms. And again, these are gonna range from mild to severe. So they can manifest in several different ways, physical, cognitive, behavioral, and emotional. So some physical symptoms of test anxiety, it's gonna be a lot like what we have talked about previous weeks. You're gonna have headaches. You're gonna have rapid heartbeat, nausea, butterflies. You may even feel dizzy. Um, I, you know, if, if you're staying up late and you're studying and you get ready the next day because you didn't sleep well, you may have a, a major headache going on and you don't really understand why you thought you were prepared. But again, it's your body responding to this adrenaline, all this super fuel flowing through your body. Maybe when the test is presented before you, you feel dizzy, you feel like you're gonna faint, and you, it's because you're nervous and those butterflies are, are rolling around in your stomach. So those are some physical symptoms that you might experience. In your behavior, cognitively, um, you avoid. Maybe your student or even you, um, all of a sudden you feel sick or they feel sick and they feel like they can't go to school. They may have a major test that day that they're trying to avoid. Fidgeting, do you ever like you're just tapping your pencil or you're popping your fingers or you're uh, curling your hair with your finger? You're fidgeting constantly because you feel that anxiety rushing through uh, your body. Other ways that you may try to respond cognitively and behaviorally is uh, you try to self-medicate, maybe with prescription drugs, maybe it's alcohol. Uh, you try to use those things to numb that anxiety that you're feeling in your body because you just want your mind to calm down. You, it's overwhelming you and you don't know what it is. Maybe you didn't realize it was anxiety, so you try to turn to those things and figure it out yourself. Uh, your negative self-talk and your lack of concentration. You're beating yourself up wondering, am I gonna be able to do this? Am I gonna do better this time than what I did last time? And then that can move us into the emotional part of test anxiety because you are beating yourself up. Maybe you made a bad grade on that last test, so now you feel like you're not gonna be able to rise above no matter how much studying you do. So you begin to become depressed, you begin to feel uh, angry, you begin to feel hopeless and helpless. Maybe you're trying to work on getting into college, getting into a certain job, getting into a different uh, area of life that you wanna be in, but there's a test involved. And you look back on different areas in your life and you're talking negatively to yourself saying, because I failed there, there's no way I can move forward over here. And then you, you also desire that perfection. I see this not just in students who are failing, but maybe you are that person who longs for perfection. You long to be the best of the best and you sacrifice so much in that, but in that striving for perfection, that anxiety is overtaking your mind and your body and it is freezing you in fear. And when those tests come, no matter what type of expert you are, in that area, no matter how many people come to you and ask you for help, when it is presented before you, you freeze. You freeze. And then when you leave that test experience, you've got that memory locked in your mind. And now 
it is affecting you in other tests that you've got to take in other areas that maybe you have to face a physical test in your life and you feel like you're not going to be able to overcome. So I know today that we've talked about what test anxiety is and what those symptoms are. Now, next week, we're going to talk about causes, causes in your life, uh, maybe from a past experience that you've had with a test or maybe something going on emotionally for you. But we're also going to talk about how to overcome. Guys, there are always ways when we have struggles, there is always a way to overcome. It does take time and it takes practice. You got to think about this. Think about how long you've been thinking this way about test. You've created this habit. So now what we're trying to do is shift, make a change in those habits, and it will take time. It will take a journey and a process. But as you take those tips that we're gonna talk about next week, you're gonna be able to look at tests in a different way, in a different light, and you're gonna be able to overcome those real struggles that you're having. Um, thank you guys again for always joining us here on Unmasked. You can follow me through Facebook and Instagram at Kara Snyder. I wanted to thank you again just for your support with the Anxiety Elephants devotional. Many of you have reached out to us here and you've let us know that you have been reading the article, that you have gone out to Books A Million to find the book and, and get the book. We're we're going to have several uh, book signings coming up and we would love to meet you guys there. We're so thankful for Books A Million support all across the nation, carrying this book and, and supporting me and getting this message out about anxiety. There's too many people facing anxiety alone. And so that's why we are working on getting the message out. So thank you guys again for joining us here and we will see you next week.